Hey, what's good guys, Alex here, and uh, two days ago I played in MBT's 128 person tournament and got top 8 with Cyber Dragon after going XO in 7 rounds of Swiss, sadly losing uh, top 8 2-1 versus VW. However, I should have been undefeated in Swiss and I will talk about that later when I get to the matches, but uh, overall I really really enjoyed this deck, it was extremely solid. You know, anyone who knows me or watches the videos from the channel before knows I prefer cyber traps over any cyber variant this format. And this deck absolutely performed really, really nicely. It could have, like, easily, and I am 100% confident, it could have, like, easily won the whole tournament just with a bit of luck in that top 8 um, match. Again, I'll talk about that a bit uh, later. So just to get a common question out of the way, is this a go first deck? Absolutely not, this is a go second board breaking deck. We are not playing like any floodgate or any like stall quotation mark uh, type card in here. They are all, all our trap cards are just like, you know, like torrential tribute to board wipe. Uh, Dogmatica punishment is there also to pop cards. Same thing for uh, overflow, like all of our cards are there to clear. The opponent's board with a help of cards like Sound Strike and Forbidden Droplet. The second thing I want to get out of the way, yes I know there is some expensive cards in here like Nadir Servant and Droplet and even Zeus in the extra deck but don't worry, you don't need all of those cards um, to compete with the deck. Actually I never summoned Zeus won the entire tournament and this is a thing I like I always say it in every video I make, if you don't have Zeus, you don't have to play it. If you like, if you have it or if you play online, there's no harm in playing it, but you don't need to get out of your way to play the card. However, when we talk about Droplet and Nadir Servant, there's something like I can't say in this video yet, because I have theories in mind, but I need to test first, so please tell me if you are interested in a budget cyber traps deck. Do you want me to make a budget cyber trap list? Please tell me down in the comments. Now let's talk about the matchup real quick. Uh, first match was uh, versus Earth Machine deck, you know, Infant Track, Machina, Trains, etc. Uh, it was like pretty fun matchup, really. Uh, even though Fortress came in clutch uh, on the first game, but on the second game he played smartly, he just made VFD, he sat on VFD, but again, this deck deals with VFD and any like other floodgate monster like Zexol or whatever with ease um, so yeah it was a sweet and clean matchup for me the second match was against Zoo Eldledge uh, again uh, just just it wasn't a really easy matchup like now this servant really performed well in that matchup I'm not gonna lie because sending and test to the graveyard and popping packer was really sweet same thing for um, you know torrential tribute was good versus zodiac monsters same thing for Solemn Strike, like, there's a lot of good cards in the main to deal with that matchup, and in the side you have a plethora of cards like Evenly, Cosmic Cyclone, and the third Ice Dragon Prison. So, you know, the Eldritch matchup is really easy if you know how to deal with it. Uh, second match, uh, third match, sorry, was versus Drytrons. Uh, you know, I, I opened really well <laughs> against him. He did full combo, but I opened Torrential Tribute and Solemn Strike. And that was like a GG, really. If, you know, you can open four Garnets, Solemn Strike, and Torrential Tribute, and you still do a lot of damage to a Dry Charm player. Psycho uh, Reader was absolutely nuts too, uh, like post siding. And actually, Psycho Reader is the only hand trap that I'm thinking about keeping it. I'm thinking about cutting hand traps from the main and the side, but I will talk about that after I'm done talking about my matchups. Fourth match was against um, Tri Brigade Lera Lusk, which uh, you might think it's uh, you know some just trash rogue deck, but actually this deck is incredibly good. This format it can kill Dry Trons really easily and have a lot of um, just dual box in the main deck and the extra deck to deal with a lot of different matchups. I uh, I won this match too, but the uh, player I was playing against actually got to the final yes this deck Tri Brigade Lerlusk got to the final uh, because as I said it has a real decent matchups versus multiple decks this format 
So congratulations to him. Uh, he, he was such a nice person too. Uh, next, I played versus uh, what was it called? I played versus pure Zodiac control. Yeah, versus pure Zodiac control. Again, he was a smart player. He did not make Zeus uh, recklessly because you know he knew I'm on Cyber Dragon. He knew I have Fortress, so he tried to play more of a, a Dryden control beatdown kind of thing, and um, it went really well for him. We uh, ended up like playing a really good matchup. It was 2-1, a lot of back and forth. I loved it. Then the last two matches were VW and VW. The first match VW was easy, easy 2-0 because this deck has a great VW matchup the the VW player that I won 2-0 against actually made it to the final and won the whole tournament so his only match loss in the entire tournament was versus this deck and he was super salty about it by the way uh, the most MVP cards uh, versus that matchup I would say are Torrential Tributes and Dogmatica Punishment and uh, also Sanum Strike was uh, really really decent uh, yeah like board wipes overall versus Drytrons and VW are insane that's why I'm thinking about also adding Needle Sealing to the deck but let's talk about that later in a bit the last match in Swiss was versus VW and that's the match I lost I lost it because of the OCG rules of chain blocking with Fear and Cyber Dragon Core if you don't know about it, I'm sure every Cyber Dragon player knows about that. You can chain block Ash and stuff like that uh, with using Cyber Dragon Fear. But the thing is, in the OCG, they treat uh, trigger effects in the hand as quick effects. So you go chain link one core, you wait for your opponents to respond, and then you chain link three Fear. We were playing on EDO Pro, and the hosts. Uh, decided to go for OCG rulings over TCG rulings for you know some technical reasons I would say that uh, that might happen during the tournament like it, it was really weird but overall if we were playing with TCG rules I would have won that match because what happened was I normal core wanted to search overflow I had fear in hand but he had ash blossom and again like if I searched overflow successfully if we were playing TCG rules I would have been able to just special fear go into uh, into Zeger attack then set overflow and my graveyard was absolutely loaded I had core hers fear and cyber dragon in the graveyard so I could have popped four cards which is as I said before board wipes are incredibly insane versus VW and that would have been game because he was on such low life points so another attack from Zeger would have been game so like personally i consider this deck undefeated in swiss like just in, in in my mind but overall it doesn't matter i got second place in swiss with my overall record uh but here's the thing that just bugged me that i did not get uh, the undefeated thing because the if i was undefeated i would have been the only undefeated player in swiss throughout the entire like players player base so that would have been insane for Cyber Dragon to, you know, to have. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, top eight match was I took game one, he took game two. Um, again, you know, there's nothing new to say here. Torrential tribute, dogmatic punishment were absolutely great. But game three, oh my god, I, I bricked so hard on Cyber Dragon monsters. I opened Cyber Dragon, two Cyber Dragon hers, and one Cyber Dragon Nashler. That was absolutely garbage. That, <laughs> like, funny enough, I sided one hers out. Like, look at I sided one hers out, and I still opened the two left in the deck. That just show you that sometimes just bad luck. You can't you can't beat bad luck, right? And uh, yeah, you know, I, I was kind of sad about that. You know, I lost just purely because of bad luck more than anything else. But yeah, you know. Top 8 for Cyber Dragon is still a huge accomplishment and um, now let's talk about what things I would change moving forward. First I would play 2 Cyber Dragon Fear because I was playing 2 before the tournament started but because they told me they're gonna go for OCG rules I changed it to 1. 
This format, Cyber Dragon Fear, is insane because no one is playing Umperm or Valor and they both can bypass the chain blocking thing. But if you look at the most like popular hand traps now, Ash, Gamma, and you know, Bell, Herald of the Orange Light, if you are playing against Drytrons, all of these cards can be blocked by Cyber Dragon Fear. So, yeah, and it's also a way to unbreak you, kinda, because you can open, like, let's say, like any. Let's say you open two fear, but which is like let's say that's the worst normal summon you have. You normal summon fear, special summon fear, go into Anaconda, dump Overlord Fusion to go into Rampage, Rampage, Foolish Burial, Hers and Core, and get Core back to your hand. So you have a follow up for next turn. So in addition to chain blocking and uh, being a quick access to Ziger, it's also a, it's also a quick access to Rampage, which you know can unbreak you and get you set up for next turn. Next thing I'm thinking about, as I said before, removing all hand traps. Uh, you know, I, I generally don't like hand traps in this like strategy overall. I, but here's the thing: I was kind of rushed before the tournament to build the deck. I had like 30 hours to completely build the deck, and uh, you know, so there is some questionable things I did here and there, like adding Crow and Ash Blossom. I really wasn't like feeling good about it. I would say. My reasoning behind the crow is, well, it hits every deck in the meta. It hits uh, VW, Drytrons, you know, uh, Eldledge, it hits Dinos, and it's not once per turn. So if you draw multiples, because I just know I have a bad luck, I, I need to play around my bad luck too. So if you draw multiples, you can use multiples. And it's a level 1, you know, you can at least summon it and go into Anima if, if you are like... In, in the grind game and you your opponent was not playing around anima you top deck a dd crow you know i tried to play like the most useful hand trap in every single situation possible but yeah i would definitely drop it because um, there's multiple things i would like to, to test really as i said needle sealing i feel would have been amazing this tournament if i had it in the side or even in the main uh, there's again i might try like i don't know the new pod that's coming out in Blazing Vortex. So like there's there's a lot of things you can try here and there instead of DD Crow and instead of Ash Blossom in the side. Uh, let's talk about the extra deck for a bit because I want to say something. Um, adding Titanic Lad and the small package of like putting a dear servant aside, the small package of uh, Fleur de Lis and Ecclesia was extremely extremely useful because. Here's the thing, even when you are locked out of your extra deck because of punishment, you could have still, uh, you know, apply pressure with Ecclesia and Fleur de Lis because they are both have like combined of 5,000 total damage, and Fleur de Lis is just big, it's 3,000 attack and every single turn it keeps gaining 500 more, 500 more, so it can get really big in a grindy game. And that's why I added uh, Titanic Lad because even when you open like five trap cards, if you have um, punishment, you can send Titanic Lad, pop your opponent's monster, and during the end phase, you can summon Ecclesia and Ecclesia search a flow the least. So you know you have some some kind of a an engine starting instead of you know just play all your trap cards and stay on top deck mode every single turn. Uh, as I said, Zeus did not come up in the entire tournament. Rampage was an absolute MVP. It's genuinely better than Infinity in this deck. Like, it's 100% better than Infinity. Like, I summoned Infinity like two times or three times in the entire tournament. Rampage, every single match, almost every single duel, even. Like, the card was amazing. Absolute nuts. Uh, why I'm playing Al Mirage if I'm not playing the Repair Plant? The entire reason was because of Ecclesia and Fleur de Lis, like you can summon any of your baby cyber dragon, especially if there's an extra deck monster. Uh, so yeah, you, you can have it online on turn 1, not only to special summon, but to special summon and negate. If you have like Ecclesia, you can summon Fleur de Lis and you know, you got you got the whole drill. Uh, what else I want to talk about? Well, there's also Dry, I want to talk about it. Um, why am I playing Dry? Well, to me, it's a better way to make Infinity than Galaxy Soldier in this deck. Because, first of all, it's a slimmer package, right? It's only one card, so you can't even call it a package. 
However, Galaxy Soldier, you need to play at least two Galaxy Soldiers and one Repair Plant, so that's three cards, which sometimes can be, you know, cloggy. Like, let's say you are playing against uh, VW and they made VFD against you. What is Galaxy Soldier doing? Absolutely nothing. At least Dry is a, uh, as I said, uh, you know, it's only one card, so the possibility of seeing it in your opening head is uh, not even that high. Two, it's a Cyber Dragon name that can be normal summoned at least, so you can go into Mega Fleet or Fortress. Three, it has 1800 attacks, so actually that came up once uh, in a match where I like because here's the thing: Rampage three times can attack three times with a total of 6300 uh, of damage, so you need 1700 to get that 8000 damage on board. And Dry just happened to have 1800, which gives you a total of 80. 100 damage it came up once if I didn't have dry in my uh, in My deck I would have lost actually funny enough. So yeah uh, But overall yeah, I, I feel like it's a better way because here's the thing um, On turn one you don't want to make infinity usually and on turn two and n-word dry just becomes absolutely better way to make infinity than uh, Sigasi soldier because what you can do is banish core from the graveyard summon another core Normal summon dry, make infinity, and there you go, with one card technically, so... Like, yeah, I just enjoy it more than Gas Soldier, in all honesty, so yeah. And as I said, infinity did not even come up that much, was not even needed that much in the entire tournament. So yeah, thank you for watching, I know, you know, my explanation sometimes can be sloppy, I don't have a script I'm working with, I'm just uh, being spontaneous here. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment uh, below. And as I said, please tell me if you would like me to build a budget cyber trap list. Okay, that's it. Peace.